Hey guys, this week on AwesomeCast, we find out what hot news stories are on fire this week. Really get heated about digital music and copyrights and so much more. Awesome Cats. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast 139. Back again, I'm Mike Sorg here in the studio in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to rock and get dirty with you guys again, get techie, get awesome, whatever is coming up with me on the couch. Now, uh, 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 suitingly uh, just vented of all his <laughs> IT woes pre-show <laughs> is Chachi. It wasn't really a vent. I don't know. It was, I, I, it was I just a take discussion. everything as a vent, uh, you know. Well, I mean, work has been pretty rough lately. Well, so. it's, it's IT. Isn't that like part of the job description is I take other people's crap. Right. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's part of it. <laughs> right. You're, you're the, you, it's got to bounce off you. It's got to bounce like, I, I gotta, you gotta get some feng shui going. Why I do you know, think I play a I, ton of Call of Duty? And plus, you have. Do you still have your um your your little tree thingy? Yeah, I do have my bonsai tree. Bonsai tree. Thank yeah. you, thank you. So you still got the Zen desk. thing going. Yeah. You know, I didn't think you were a meditation guy, but more more I realized you were in with that. Oh, well, you 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 kind of surround yourself in you know, your work environment with things that keep you happy. Mm-hmm. Like I have a bunch of a little Lego. Uh, what are they called? Migos. The little figures. Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. a bunch of those on my desk, and then I have like uh, the stuffed animals. Like you create uh, this happy little place right, for yourself right. with your happy little tree. Why do you your... think? Why do you think I get to work and I roll a twenty sided die? That's the first thing I do in the day. Exactly. Because regardless of how ridiculous it sounds, I believe that die roll is going to dictate how my day is going to pan out. I I I I smell a block series. Uh, what? I smell a blog series. I wrote a one today. How was? How did that relate to my day? You know, no, actually, I mean, today was a could, ten. It was and a ten. It, the day was. So it was half and half. Yeah, the okay. day was, and okay. the day was actually. Uh, yesterday, I ruled a low number. It was crap. <laughs> I think I rolled a one yesterday. I can't remember. So, like, you're like seeing the low numbers. You're like, oh, no. Right. Not not only is it a small, is a is it a fun, uh, non denominational uh, gambling game for everybody to play with you on Twitter. Right. Uh, um, it's uh, and I know Uncle Crappy. You, I see you participate a good bit. I'm usually like involved, and I can't get my number in because I'm driving and I see the tweet pop up. And I'm like, Damn. if I if I wake up in time if you um, wake up and in actually time. bother look at the phone before eight o'clock, I try to get a I try to get a, a guess in. There he is. There he is. And as he's the digital paper man. He might be being be uh, got his raise in uh, bitcoins. We have not determined that yet, but it's my pound. Uncle Crappy of UncleCrappy.com and the fine, fine Beaver County Times at the TimesOnline.com. Yes, a real the news burning. person. The fine burning, burning, burning. paper. <laughs> we had we had a fire at our you building had a today. Fire. It was it was spectacular. Which um, means I'm 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 incredibly unprepared for the show and um, completely accidental. I want to say I, I did uh, <laughs> really news break hot off the presses. <laughs> <laughs> really? So, so I, I just realized. What, what else am I gonna do? Come on. We'll lead into why this is here, but I just realized I looked over at my tabs when I was just to go go and go. So there's 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 your workplace on fire. Yes. Uh, I'm yes. glad you guys were covered it at the source. Uh, <laughs> some fine newspapering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the, 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 the fire departments that they came were just usually they can tell us you know we have to be off the property and everything and they were really annoyed because they're like they're like twelve of us taking pictures and video and asking <laughs> questions it's like oh god will you people just go away let's do our jobs <laughs> they can't yeah. throw you off the no, property no, they this can't. time <laughs> they're they like can't. uh yeah you're kind of rescuing our building like this guy, this guy doesn't look gonna... happy to be talking to you. <laughs> He is uh, no, and and he he tried to put me off for a while, and he's actually a, a pretty cool guy. He's retired, but he uh, he goes answers calls during the day when a lot of the other volunteers from the Bridgewater Department are are far enough away that they can't get back. So, um, I uh, that's um uh, his name is Jim, and I I do appreciate his help today, but um. The, the fire wasn't a big deal. A uh, big electrical thing in the back. The um, you could hear the the arcing like for uh, the, all the way up the valley. It was really it's actually pretty impressive. Um, and we weren't hurt. 
and I don't know if they have electricity yet in the building. Um, I'm going to have to find that out at some point and see if I need to continue working later on tonight or not. <laughs> Excellent. This is a great day. This is a great day. <laughs> well, I, and and I uh, and, and and not to get too uh, weird, but so I, I noticed when I was going to you know I queued that up so we could pull it up here, but right next to it is Chachi's pick that we'll get into in a second with well, Fahrenheit 451 uh, in the next tab. Uh, completely accidental. That happened. Ooh. So, but we'll get into that. Uh, I'll explain You'll it. Explain it's, that. You'll it's explain it. Awesome. This is the Awesome Cast. You can find everything, all the episodes and everything over at awesomecast.com. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We respond to you guys or read it or eventually. Sometimes we're a little slow. We're cast on Twitter and you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher and in video forums on Blip TV, YouTube and on your Roku box. Um, ask me how that happens. Um, also, you can... <laughs> wait. No, I didn't have Did I have it also? Oh, hey, you can join us here live at live.sorgatronmedia.com every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Sometimes you can catch some stuff that we don't uh, throw in on the show for one other re- one reason or another. Maybe names were named. Uh, who knows? Um, but other than that, uh, you can join us in the chat. Our, our technology isn't working um, or we're wrong, 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 wrong. Uh, and sometimes they have better stuff. And I am never wrong. About. What is the uh, was it Chachi's? It's Chachi's zone of safety. I guess that's, that was the early stuff when we we're talking. Yeah, about yeah. Our it's zone. my it's my zone of happy. Your zone of happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's get right into. I like to do the. Oh wait, you know, before we get, in, I have one more thing. Uh, what? Before what, we get into what? that, I like. What is it, boy? You know. I, what is it, boy? <laughs> <laughs> what is it, boy? What? Oh, I'm talking to you this time, not the dog. <laughs> Who wants this dog? <laughs> not up for sale not up for at, sale at the end but of the show was... we will be auctioning off the dog <laughs> uh, but uh, you know I, uh, we can now say that uh, two friends of the show he's running away <laughs> uh, this one by name because I don't think Rob was not in this by name uh, when uh, his work was featured uh, but two friends of the show have now been uh, featured in some way or another at wired.com Ooh. Ooh. Fancy. Uh, in this case, an early, early guest we had on here. Remember Nick Pinkston? Uh-uh. Yes. Yes, yeah, you know, CloudFab was a great Alpha Lab uh, startup. I'm talking about 3D printers and everything. Uh, crowdsourced Maker Map charts nearby hacker spaces and hardware shops. Remember a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the tech shop here in Pittsburgh that just opened up, and Rob was just loving the idea, and I think he's already a charter member. Uh, this is basically... Uh, a map to uh, 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 it's an open source DIY uh, DIY outlet tracking Google Map uh, that tries to show off uh, all the San Francisco marketplaces and related establishments here at Cord and Wired, uh, dividing them by c- category and plotting them out geographically. So a nice little uh, crowdsource mapping tool uh, that him and a partner have made out there for San Francisco uh, for that cool stuff. And remember, they, they're in with CloudFab. They were trying to kind of bring together all those resources for the available 3d printers and of course 3d printers are kind of becoming a little more broad you know um i mean you know not accessible that i'm going to have one on my desk in my personal office but it's still like they're they're becoming a little more prevalent you're seeing them a lot you're seeing a lot of them at CES, ces and everything uh but it was really kind of a big thing uh definitely back then uh, i'm not sure exactly if how CloudFab's doing right now or if they're still rolling or not uh but but still, kind of a before his time thing. So, uh, so yeah. So I thought it was pretty cool that you know somebody uh, from the show uh, once again got featured in a wire. So uh, go check that out. Uh, I think I tweeted it out. If not, I'll tweet it out again here uh, from the Awesome Cast account uh, on on these social medias. So awesome. So Chachi, you yeah. you are more prepared than I am for this. I one. am. You have an awesome thing of the week. I, I want, do. I want you to tell me about this. It's not technology. It, well, it's a book. It's media, though. Right, it's media. It's allowed to be something you can geek out about. You know, it, that's fine. Uh, they re-released Fahrenheit 451. Good. With a new cover. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a matchbook. It is. <laughs> uh, the uh, the binding on the book is the the strike the strike plate, and if you if you look at the the front of the book, where the one should be, is a little indent, and in that indent is a match. So, should you want to actually burn the, a copy of Fahrenheit 451, they give you all the tools right there. That's awesome. really cool. And if you're if you're uneducated or simply not into knowing, Fahrenheit 451 is about burning books. Yeah. 
Because that is the temperature at which the paper burn. burns. Paper yes. burns, yes. Excellent, excellent. So simple, yet awesome. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Uncle Crappy, do you have an awesome thing of the week? Um, I actually, uh, I, I did. I, I do have a, an awesome thing of the week, and it's going to work into a couple of the, the different things we're going to talk about at some point later on. Um, I, I know I'm throwing this throwing this at you without any preparation at all. Um, my my awesome thing of the week is archive.org, uh, specifically nice. the live music archive at archive.org. They they host uh, literally thousands of of uh, music recordings, mostly live shows. Uh, you can see the, uh, the Grateful Dead steal your face right there. That's uh, one of the biggest collections they have. Um, the, 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 the really cool thing is they have explicit permission from each of the artists uh, that, that are hosted uh, on the site uh, for, to allow them to host the shows, uh, allow them to be available for uh, streaming or downloading, depending on what the, what the different band's rules are. Um, and uh, as, as I said before, we will, we will get into exactly why. This is the awesome thing of the week. The archive is not an is not a new thing. It's uh it's been a, a, mm-hmm. a favorite site of mine for many many years. But yeah. uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about right, uh, Mike, the specifics I, of why later on. I have a question for you. Yes, please do. Um, this is something that's been bothering me for the past week or so. Mm-hmm. Um, on Friday, I was watching the news uh, when I got home from work, uh, like mm-hmm. I like I normally do, and mm-hmm. they they did a story about how uh, vinyls are making a comeback. Oh, true. And they said that people are are listening to the vinyl because it has a better sound. <laughs> I, uh, I I that, don't understand a, a, it. De- Does it make sense? <laughs> Can, um, I think it has a different sound. Uh, I, I, I and 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 this is something that I, I struggle with a little bit um, because the, the 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 media actually letter matters a little bit less to me than than the actual music. Okay. Um, but but I have people who will who will tell you that um, I, I know plenty of people who would tell you that that uh, vinyl um, sounds richer. Uh, there's a little more depth. Uh, the bass is truer. I, I I don't know how that that's possible right. uh, if you're talking about a, a, an exact lossless digital copy of a piece of music. Um, but I, I, I think, I think a, a, at least a little bit also has to do with nostalgia, whether people would be willing to admit that or not. Okay. Um, See, but, that's because what I mean, it's something I that, that, that people my age grew up with, you know, you put the record on the turntable and the needle and the whole thing, and you, and you, it, you know, it's just this whole process well, um, that have, doesn't really exist now. I have, I have, uh, I have several albums, mm-hmm. um, but when it comes to comparing the sound to a digital format, I mean, there's no comparison. You can do more with the digital format than you could mm-hmm. with with the vinyl. Mm-hmm. So there's no possible way that with the technology that we have that a vinyl copy would sound richer than a, a digital copy just because you have the ability to mess with it more. And it was confusing me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Analog versus digital. I mean, that that seems like a, a pretty simple argument to me. Um, and as I said, the, the, the medium doesn't matter too much as much to me as, as the music does. But I, I the, the thing I said about nostalgia, I think, Kind of plays a big part in this, whether people admit that or not. Um, uh, if if you, especially if you grew up with with records when they were actual records, um, you, you, you sort of miss that and enjoy the process. Uh, you know, the album art that's you know not not this size, right. but but uh, twelve by twelve. That 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 whole thing. Um, and I, and I, I I miss that some. Mm-hmm. I, I I I get that part, but uh, um, boy, a, a, a clean digital copy of a, of a live show that I've, I've just been to, that, that's pretty hard to beat. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do miss, back in the day, having the giant fold-out Sesame Street Christmas vinyl. And, yes! Uh, have, yeah, I mean, that was yes. an experience. Like, like I, would, like, I did not understand it, but my mom had a Def Leppard with a really cool colorful co- <laughs> cover, and I'd just sit there and be like, wow! Then, well, I mean, I have, I have several Sublime albums. Yeah. That okay. it, the, the record itself is art. Mm-hmm. 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 Like there's mm-hmm. there's custom. oh like the vinyl itself was yeah. was was yeah. arted up yeah, yeah. yeah. the vinyl cool. the it didn't come with an album cover it came in a plastic sleeve mm-hmm. because the artwork was on the album itself yeah yeah and I mean I and I that, listen to and those and that's more of a collector's right. kind of situation right yes. I listen to those and I understand mm-hmm. that I mean the art is part of it but there's no way that that copy sounds any sounds better than a, a digital mm-hmm. version mm-hmm. and, and it's it, this whole thing was confusing okay. <laughs> I'm I'm partial to eight tracks myself. 
No, you're not. No one. No one is. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, I, I know. That was, where that I was an get awful year music. in music. Well, I, I, that, and the only reason I brought year, it up that was about five years of my life. <laughs> the only reason I brought it up here is because I, I know Mike is a huge uh, music fan, mm-hmm. and so I'm like, well, I'll ask him. He's the guy because he won't yell at me for asking him. Because <laughs> I know if I put the question on Twitter. I'll get yelled at. You're gonna start a flame war, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. People will be got, like, "I've got 200, uh, t- 200 some records uh, in in cartons in the basement. I don't have a turntable, and at some point, I'll get a turntable and I will I will listen to them." Yeah, you can get um, like, a USB. But I, I, I'm not sure that it's much more nostalgia than than yeah. anything else. Right. Yep. Definitely. Um, I, you know, in lieu of uh, an awesome thing of the week, I, I want to expand on you on on you guys there. Uh, okay. Uh, with the uh, uh, archive.org. Uh, mm-hmm. One cool thing I know they started a while ago was uh, ever try the Wayback Machine? Yes. On here? This is cool. Yes. Now, I don't know. Maybe we can uh, think of a site that's changed over the years. I mean, go to Google, I guess, would be the easiest thing to do. What? Uh, so you go on the Wayback Machine, right? Mm-hmm. And let's see if, how this works. Okay, see, uh, and they've actually spruced this up a little bit. So. All of these. Oh God, that does look different. All these. Te- yeah, yeah. This is this is completely different. It used to be just like a text list, and you can go yeah. to the year. Uh, but so okay. So you see how back it go- how far back it goes all the way back. Looks like these black marks are uh, 1998, and it looks like these. This is all of the updates that they've archived. So they've made a copy of the site right. Google.com um, here from uh, here to, uh, February 7th, 2006. Now, obviously, this is one with a lot of traffic, so it's going to get a lot more updates. And there's what Google looked like in, in what did I say, 2006? Mm-hmm. So, hey, 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 different. hey. Ah. It looks exactly the well, same. Well, it doesn't look exactly <laughs> the same. I mean, go to Google now. Okay, it looks a little different. We got a bar at the top. <laughs> Okay, maybe. Hey, hey. All right. How about Yahoo? There, that's a yeah, good that one. Would, that might be that would how about be Yahoo? One. Okay, I or 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 your blog or something. I've gone from server to server, so it's not a good example. But let's go to Yahoo. Uh, and there's Yahoo. Let's go back to December two thousand. Hey, there's Yahoo from December two thousand. So really cool, especially on bigger sites. You're going to get right. more updates like yep. this. Uh, every once in a while, when I lost my blog, I would go back through this <laughs> over the years, <laughs> back in about the mid two thousands, when I had some really really bad CMS systems that were based in CGI and would fail a lot. Um, well, I mean, they, that's why I'm gun shy using, about WordPress. By the way, <laughs> they've been doing that uh, not just archive, but there it's what the Gutenberg. Gutenberg Project. Project, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, so another one. That's where it. they post books that are no no longer mm-hmm. under... And Archive does that, too. Yeah. The Archive's doing that, too. With yep. that, uh, there's a lot of old video. I remember we were trying to dig up, uh, back when I worked at the, the, the training company, we dug up all this old footage of, like, U.S. Steel, like, company and training videos that were, mm-hmm. like, black and white. Um, mm-hmm. Old movies, cause, you know, because, you know, there, there's a lot of movies on here that you can find like stuff like Reefer Madness on here, yes. like those old educational films. It's it's crazy. Did you just what call kind of Reefer stuff? Madness an educational film? It was, wasn't it? I think comma and educational films. Comma and educational <laughs> films. Uh, but yeah, that kind of stuff. Like, but but look, like stuff like that where you know the whole like you know the the bad drug films and everything like that. Film noir stuff in here. It says ten o'clock news. Looks like there's newscasts in here now. Yes. Um, I, I and I know for a while. Um, not on Blip, but on is it Tube Mogul that would that would uh, disseminate your content out. Uh, you, you could post your podcast onto Archive. I think if you look up like Wrestling Mayhem Show on here, maybe Awesome Cast early days, uh, you might be able to find it on here uh, under audio. Uh, so, which was pretty cool because then you're you're backed up and it's free, especially if you're putting something out, Creative Commons. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a pretty cool uh, uh, thing you could do with it. And then, then it's free and it's not copyrighted. It's it, it's out there. These guys are going to back it up. These guys are going to try to be the library of it's um wait who runs this? The library of is the it library of Con- library of Congress? I think it's connected to them, but not run by them. Yeah. Universal um, access to all knowledge, and 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 funny uh, because of our jokes earlier. Uh, there's like two articles here about uh, employees to be paid in Bitcoin. Please donate. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
institutional support, uh, HP, da, 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 National Science Foundation, Library of Congress is one of the one of the <laughs> supporters uh, of this project. Yes, so so pretty cool. Archive.org. If you ever look for something old like that, or new, or, or something you can use, because this is typically out of yes. copyright stuff. So if you're like, I need footage of this, I don't mind it being old. There you go. Great for documentaries. If you're doing. But I'm sure we have plenty of documentary makers out there. So, anyway, since you're already talking about, let's roll around to talking about the music there, Uncle Crappy. Um, I know the gas pump the other morning was telling me about how music is not dead because of digital downloads. Um, uh, that's you went to BP. I went to BP where they had the TVs. <laughs> that depends on, on on who you're talking to. If you look at if you look at the results, um, as you mentioned in the in the show notes you sent us, uh, that they're, they're actually doing pretty well. The music industry is uh, for the first time in a while, and that has a lot to do uh, with uh, digital distribution of music. Um, you balance that. Uh, with the industries, with the entertainment industry's latest effort, um, the uh, the six strikes program oh. that uh, got underway last week, oh. um, and and you see that the despite the fact that the music industry is 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 making money again, they're not still they're still not sold on on uh, this whole internet thing and and uh, what it means whether um, whether people are are going to archive and downloading shows legally whether they're they're uh, the pulling pirated content. Um, they, they don't quite get the uh, the notion that that exposure at some point will equal sales, and so we're we're still we still have to deal with things like this ridiculous six strikes thing that they've they've conned the cable companies into into participating in. <laughs> well, let's take it one one step at a time. Okay. So, yes. So, but the but the, the the first uh, uh, point here is that the music industry is growing uh, in part because of the growth of digital sales, but physical sales are still dominant. And I think they may have sure. themselves risen a little bit. Sure. Yes. Uh, is, is the between the lines. I, I know the article is like, wow, digital sales helped uh, save the industry. Da, 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 da. But when you start getting into it, it really kind of dances into, yeah, but it's still only a part of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I know I was asked earlier about like, hey, do you see a point where video, you know, digital distribution, when we're talking about wrestling videos, uh, uh, are going to be, you know, the thing. And, and it's like, well, you're always going to have somebody that doesn't have the bandwidth. So you're always going to have the physical. And yep. But this got me thinking. So, so we're still dependent on the physical sales, but your variety in those physical sales are completely disappearing as that section keeps shrinking in Walmart and Best Buys across the country. Mm -hmm. And how many mm -hmm. uh, how many record stores are left that actually the, do have that variety? The, the best example um, that that I can tell you is is the Border Store that used to be on McKnight Road in, mm -hmm. in the Northway Mall um, in in Pittsburgh's North Hills for for those of you who aren't in town. Um, I mean, we we would Kelly and I would would drive when we lived in Butler. We would that was a destination for us, and that was because pretty much the whole basement, the whole uh, ground floor of that store was music. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a, a cavernous location, and they had freaking everything, and in every category. I mean, you can you can go and find all kinds of world music, um, and it did, you know, the African drumming CDs, everything you could possibly want. An incredible jazz selection, and then and then you watch over the years as that gets you know it gets cut in half, and then it gets cut down, and then you know at some point. Um, we went in the store, and, and the entire music selection is on three kind of tall racks. And I'm just like, I, I'm not coming here anymore. I, I can't, because I, because I like buying CDs. I, I, I at that point I was still buying physical media, um, and 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 some of it is some of it is is our responsibility because we changed how we we purchase music, uh, but but some of it is the industry's responsibility as well. Um, and, and and part of that is because they've been they've been slow. They, they they weren't making money because they have been slow to embrace uh, the, the the digital side of distribution. Um, but just depressing. Uh, that was that was awful watching that watching that store watching the border store overall die. But for me, watching the music section in particular just shriveled into, into pretty much nothing. Now I gotta ask though is um, no as somebody that looked for you know more you know eclectic, eclectic stuff like that you mm -hmm. know that love that kind of experience of what can I find here? Mm -hmm. Do you find that that variety? is still out there in the form of an iTunes or Amazon kind of situation? Like, has that replaced that, at least in the findability 
aspect of for it? For the most part, yes. Um, maybe not on iTunes, but there are, there are other services. Uh, uh, eMusic is one that I, I really like a lot. Um, you know, you, you, you give them, I think I give them 12 bucks a month, and I get uh, a certain number of downloads um, from them. But they, they have an incredible jazz catalog. They have, they have a, a, a really nice, uh, expansive catalog uh, of stuff, and it, I mean, it, it, it's actually daunting to kind of to, to go come through everything. Um, but for for the the things that that you can't necessarily find on iTunes, um, I can usually find it there. And then I'm and then I'm looking at other sources. I'm looking at um, uh, 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 eTree, which is a BitTorrent site. Um, they're similar to the archive in that they they only host uh, BitTorrents that. Um, uh, that where the artists have have approved that sort of distribution, um, and that's that's live shows. And the archive, uh, of course, is an awesome resource. Um, and that, that that's that's even worth kind of surfing through because you'll you'll come up with bands that you've never heard of, may never have a chance to see. Um, but it, it's it's uh, th- those are those are both really really cool ways to to, to find new stuff. So I, I think um, I, I think yeah, you can if you're if you're willing to take a little time and look. Um, I, I can find that kind of selection that I used to be able to, you know, walk down to the basement of Borders and mm-hmm. and and spend a couple hours there going through their stuff. And it has, it, 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 if you think about it, I think uh, instead of somebody like the Borders having just this giant storage bin of stuff, like yeah, mm-hmm. it's great for somebody like you that's finding stuff like that. But mm-hmm. they're maintaining this kind of kind of sword, you know, like I said, storage unit of music that eh, somebody will pick through and buy stuff. It doesn't make sense to have that stock available, mm-hmm. whereas you go to your digital stuff and we can say yeah you can have everything and it's no skin off our backs so we we're storing this on a server somewhere here you sure. go you know I, I think that's one of the advantages we're seeing from going from the you know uh, uh, digital to physical you know and, and, mm-hmm. and that's why you're seeing these shrink in this in this capacity if I want the variety I'm going to go do that uh, one thing cited in this article here on the verge was okay you know what well, well, can we uh, account to it lately uh, you know stuff like Adelie is that how you say it? I always screw it up. Adele. Adele's. Yes. Son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> Adele's, uh, Adele and, and, and Call Me Maybe and stuff being huge singles and everything over the years, uh, over the year, uh, which is if you go to your Walmart, Best Buy, etc., you will find that. And if that's so, going to be the big bulk thing, that's going to be available to the general populace and to the rest of us that want something more interesting, we'll go to where we want to go. We know where to find it. Mm-hmm. And it's easier for you to find you know, your jazz, your whatever, you know, your 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 random, you know, rare stuff uh, online, and even more so because I mean, aren't you finding like Grateful Dead stuff you never would have found on foot at this point? It, it, it's and that's that's one of the great things about the archives. I have copies of every show that I that I attended. I have copies oh, of, awesome. of pretty much all the classic shows that I want. There really aren't. There, there are a few that aren't hosted in one form or the other on the archive. Um, mm-hmm. But, but uh, you know, the Deadheads were were uh, among the first sort of subgroups of geeks in terms of of cataloging and and paying attention and trading recordings before we had the means to do this digitally. Um, so that that section of the live music archive is is actually pretty complete, and and you you can you can find pretty much whatever whatever you want to listen to. Just about, just about. I could not find any insane clown posse, but I did find some twisted. Okay, very okay. odd. Very ICP odd. may not be taper friendly. I, nope, I don't know. I I, 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 it's kind of weird, you know. <laughs> uh, would that be a sticking point for them? Yeah. Throw Fago after a while. Uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, and, and I think that's uh, I think the the digital opportunity I think is the bigger story here. You know, so then and and you know, there's more chances when you're getting those music. I mean, now the borders was that? Man, I know we're stuck on the borders, but was that new music or used music? Uh, they, I'd, but they did sell some UCDs, um, okay. and, and they were just kind of tucked in. They're but, always but bulk, very clearly but marked, but they're wise. just tucked in the regular catalog. But typically, like you see a store like that, they're usually like look at the exchange here in the, in, in the Pittsburgh mm-hmm. area. Uh, they're typically used CDs, which yes. you don't see a cut of that uh, go into the record industry. You know, kind of the same thing the game industry is. So now, for the people Eve. like you, 
that are looking for something kind of outside the box, now you're going to sources, you know, obviously not the live stuff, the, the, the archive stuff, but you're going to something like eMusic or something else, and the industry is getting a piece of that more often than not than they used to when you bought it legitimately. That's that's an interesting point. Um, it, CDs were were always overpriced, even even at fifteen bucks. Um, mm-hmm. the, the industry, and this is part of the reason that they they didn't want to uh, let go of of the, the physical media. They they were making a ton of money, more than they should have, uh, off of those CDs. Um, and obviously, you know, if you're if you're paying uh, fifteen or sixteen bucks for a CD, uh, if you're actually going and and, and buying the thing, versus uh, a ten dollar download or an eight dollar download, wherever you can, the the music industry is making less money mm-hmm. off of that. Now, mm-hmm. the, their their costs are are less. That that is true as well. But I, I think the the margins had been pumped up so high on on the the, the physical media. Um, that that naturally they're they're gonna they're gonna complain um, when when these things aren't selling anymore mm-hmm. uh, because they're not making as much money off of off the downloads. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I had I, I'm sorry, I just escaped my brain. I had something else pertaining to music here. Um, oh, Pandora. Pandora, that's what I wanted to touch on, because you mentioned e-music here before we yes. get to the Six Strikes, but I think it can be a whole other broad conversation. Uh, Pandora had uh, uh, came out last week saying, uh, of course, uh, they've been in the news. They've been fighting tooth and nail with uh, the, the music industry and I think regulators uh, because they're getting kind of a, a pretty high licensing tax for what's going on. To the point where, uh, according to The Verge here, uh, they're going to cap free mobile listening at... F- and, and of course, it's blaming the licensing cost for that. Yes. Now, I'm somebody. Oh, we'll get into it. Well, I'm somebody that I do pay my thirty six dollars a year. I just paid uh, at the end of the year here for my second year of this. I enjoy it. I listen to it all the time. Uh, I I would rather be without abs. I like having the ability to skip more than I typically would. So it's worth it to me, right? And I want to support mm-hmm. the service. I want to be. Mm-hmm. I, I believe in Pandora as a service, and I don't want it to go away. Um, and, and of course, they're making a bit off the ads too, and everything. But it, this is interesting because this is a return because they used to have limits. And it used to be you get that, right. that $36 a year or $5 a month thing, right. so you don't have that limit anymore. Um, but it, the interesting thing they are doing is if you hit your cap for the month, you can just uh, you know drop a dollar. Probably it'll just come up in your app, and you can iTunes store it or, or wherever you're at. Um, and uh, and you can continue for the rest of the month, uh, you know. Again, with ads and everything, but still, um, what do we? Is this? Um, and, I, and from my understand, something like Spotify does not have the same issues that Pandora does. No. Is, is this unfor- unfair in the long run with what's ha- just dead? They're Dang. dying. There's so many alternatives out there. Uh, they they have to find a way to recoup costs. Well, here's the problem. They, they're still one of the most successful uh, as far as people using it. Uh, you know, I think the only competitor really is Spotify. Right. People aren't paying but, for it, though. But the problem is, well, but they're, they're, people are paying for it like me or people are paying for it with ads. They're still getting income. But the problem is their licensing fees are eclipsing other things and their profits are getting eaten away. I think about site has the same problems the same licensing costs yeah, no they it, don't it, i don't believe they do they have to because the, the whole thing is it, well here's the here's the thing something like uh your e-music it, it's not like a purely streaming like yours is like a selective streaming kind of e- e- e-music right? is downloads E music downloads. is downloads. Now and you- I'm I'm still enough of an old guy that I, I prefer actually owning the stuff yeah. than streaming. Although I, I I do give Spotify my my fifteen bucks a month or whatever it is, um, yeah. and, and use that at work a lot. Uh, but I, my my default is still I, I want I want to own the files and I want them on my iPod and that's how I listen to it. And I usually. don't know, I don't know like 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 the complete details of this so like, anybody out there correct me if i'm wrong because something like pandora is purely streaming like i get what they push to me it's a different situation than a spotify mm-hmm. e-music where you have a download i you are selectively getting it situation mm-hmm. and they get a uh, explicit cut off of that um, well then pandora needs to rework their contract well they're trying to though it's not even that they're, they have to hit the regulator uh, does pandora need to not rework its contracts but but we rework how it it, it presents music 
That might be too. That might be too. But I, I, I'm wondering, like, what can they do outside of it? Uh, let me let me dig a little bit more into this. Um, their explanation here. It says he blames the, the licensing costs. Here's what they're saying, uh, just just for a basis here. Pandora's uh, per track royalty rates have increased more than 25% over the last three years, including 9% in 2013 alone, and are scheduled to increase an additional 16% in the next two years. Um, he says the company already leans on advertising to cover some of that cost and says that the monthly limit is the best way to avoid further disruptions to all customers. Quote, this is an effort to balance the reality of increasing royalty costs with our desire to maximize access to free listening on Pandora. Um, Pandora is getting riveted. Basically, they are. And that has been a fight mm-hmm. that they've been doing for a while. And they have been waging a battle here, saying on Verge, with uh, the music right holders. They took to Congress last year arguing that it shouldn't be forced to pay higher royalties than the traditional radio stations, because that's what they're being classified as. Um, it has also filed a lawsuit against ASCAP over what it claims to have become exorbitant fees the organization demands on behalf of songwriters. Uh, so, again, yes, they need to re- renegotiate their damn contract, but they're getting reclassified differently than somebody like a Spotify. It, it, their business model isn't uh, isn't fitting the service they're providing. They, they, I, or I, that, I think that, that, that music providers say they're providing. They I need think to is, adapt. Is the issue. They need That's to adapt. Or, the, or is this the music industry just killing off something? I would lean that direction. Mm-hmm. I think. I, I, the, 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 the thing you read about... Um, uh, arguing that the the fees, the licensing fees that Pandora has to pay shouldn't be different uh, than than what radio stations have to pay uh, rings true to me. I mean, they're, 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 we're basically talking about uh, about the same thing. It's not it's not an on demand service. You know, you don't get to you, you can you can pick your music by genre, which you can sort of do uh, in over the air radio. Um, and I, I, it, this, this seems to me like this is this is going back to the music industry and and fear of of online distribution, um, mm-hmm. even though it isn't appreciably different than than what uh, what radio stations do. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just it's just a, a, a different a different media and uh, one that the industry is is not especially comfortable with. And I think the other thing I have with you is I, I do I, I believe I've heard that the the music industry is trying to go after radio stations to raise that cost because I mean traditionally you say you know radio stations are were the advertising medium for the music industry right yes. I think that was the understanding like like and they they have lower rates because like okay this is how we sell music is put them out the radio now they're turning that around trying to get more rates from the radio stations as a whole but they have you know they have their unification as you know their 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 industry standards and they are, have bigger companies like clear channel to defend them yeah. versus somebody small like pandora so right. i think that's where the disparity yeah they you can't say yes they need to rene- renegotiate they need to ha- they they need to fight and change the rules and when the you thing, have the music- thing i want to see the thing i want to see is is what happens uh you know when we get to the point where radio listenership where those numbers drop to the mm-hmm. point where the industry says oh, okay this this traditional investment may not be worth our time anymore do they I think do that's they the fight? Do they raise the? Do they you know they go after radio stations even harder for for increased licensing fees? Mm-hmm. Um, do they do they work with the, with the Pandoras and the other services like that to uh, maybe come up with an agreement that that makes more sense? Um, that's that's going to be one to watch uh, in 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 the, the, the years that come. I, I, I think that's going to be uh, it'll be an interesting thing to see how the the radio stations react or how the how the recording industry reacts to to those changes and, and those shifts in listenership. And I think you're seeing that as it is because I mean, look at stuff like the iHeartRadio app and everything. I, I've yeah. heard a, a radio guy talking about. I don't understand why we have FM on our name anymore because we're not anymore. You know, right. we have people listening to our show from you know Florida around the world because of that iHeartRadio app then you know why are, we're not we're not a radio station anymore at this point at least in the traditional FM sense it doesn't matter let's just be this you know um, and I think that is also redefining those rules and going to make that fight harder for radio stations unfortunately in the other way um, 
So, and that's that's why we're going. I mean, the music industry is trying to regulate these roles to make more money. So now Pandora is fighting back in that. It's not. It, it's just not going to be a, a, a contract negotiation. Um, and other losses for the little guy. We'll get into here. Comcast and Cablevision detail their six strike copyright alert strategies. Mike, I think you've been following this story. I wrote about this in my in my column over the weekend. Um, and this. You know, this is kind of, this kind of touches on the, the stuff we've been talking about, um, the, the the music industries, uh, and in this case, um, it's television and film are involved as well. Um, this is a system that they have set up, uh, and the, and the major cable companies have agreed to this either because they are, are content producers, Comcast, or they don't want to get sued, uh, Time Warner and everybody else. Um, they send you uh if you take a look at the where did they, where did they put the site um it's uh, center for copyright information uh copyrightinformation.org it's a very very happy center for copyright right, information. information very very happy site or cheerful and okay, they outline what happens um if if uh, someone at your IP address, uh, if there if there's unusual activity, I mean obviously they, they can't trace this down to an individual person, uh, but you're you're that they have members of the industry who will join peer to peer sites and monitor activity, um, and if they if they see me pulling a Grateful Dead show from someplace where uh, maybe I'm not supposed to pull it from. Um, they say, "Oh, this IP address is is uh, is in the middle of a three gig download. What's up with that?" They get in touch with my cable provider. My cable provider will send me a a happy fun message saying, "Hey, it appears that someone has been uh, using this IP address to illegally download music, movies, television shows, whatever." Um, and then there are there are stepped up warnings. Eventually, uh, you, you, you get a couple happy notices. Uh, then you might get a notice that uh, where you will have to um, uh, you'll get a landing page when you try to, to uh, open up a browser. You'll have to acknowledge that you have been warned. Um, there are other penalties. Uh, they say um, removing you from a service is not one of those, but um, they can. Um, uh, I have to go back here and look at my. There are there are a couple different um, penalties. I'm looking. Wasn't there? I, isn't there one penalty I was hearing about where they will actually limit your access to Facebook and YouTube? Um, I didn't. I haven't seen that specific. One of the things that they they will they will do if you go past the happy friendly warnings uh, is is a uh, uh, is, is clock actually clock your connection. Um, so it, it makes downloading a three gig Grateful Dead show. Uh, a, a painful endeavor, um, and I, I, I'm, I'm dubious about this uh, for for some pragmatic reasons. You know, it, if I, I I pull the shows that I pull uh, from sites where I'm allowed to be and and where the the content that I'm pulling is allowed to be. Um, you know, what, if someone looks at this, it, it looks at my sees notices the activity and, and sees me pulling a, a, a three gig. Grateful Dead show, and they they're not aware of the rules. Am I going to get a warning in in that case? Um, I, I'm 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 dubious about uh, I'm dubious about the whole thing, and, and then it, it goes back to the larger the larger issue of uh, the music industry not not grasping what what this can do for your business even even the even the illegal activity um i mean this is this has been shown time and time again it, it, exposure equals sales you know if if i if i download um if i download a record uh that i'm that, that i'm that i'm not paying for but i like it um, I, I'm I'm gonna go find I'm gonna go find more, and, and the chances are good I'm gonna go see this band. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, make legal purchases uh, of their music, um, in, in in the music industry, and the larger entertainment entertainment industry doesn't doesn't grasp this, um, and and it's something uh, the bands that I listen to, uh, which are you know kind of hippie bands. If you're talking about the Grateful Dead or Fish, the Grateful Dead build a career. Um, a, a very build a career on very very loyal fans, not not through record sales because frankly their studio albums were awful, um, 
that, that's not true. They, 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 a few of them were awful, but they, they were in studio. They were average. But but I can listen to I can listen to shows. I can listen to classic shows from the seventies out in California. I can I can listen to every single show that I that I attended uh, in the years that I was seeing them. Um, and that didn't make me want to do anything except go see more. Um, in, in the end, exposure equals money. And, and, and the industry has to understand this at some level. Um, and, and, you know, what we, what we see with the Pandora stuff, uh, what we see with the six strikes thing, they, they don't get it. And, and, it, and it's, it's, been, it's been a couple decades now, and they still don't get it. Mm-hmm. So this sure. and this is this is a sidestep because this is something like we we know in, in France they were going to do a three strikes law. Mm-hmm. Um, this is this is the industry reacting right without any sort of law. This is uh, the, the, the if you look at the about section for the the Center for Copyright Information, um, you will see their partners in the industry: the Recording Industry Association of America, the Motion Picture Association of America. We know about Comcast and its ownership of NBC. Uh, mm-hmm. They are content producers as well. Um, that that is who is driving this. And, and, and um, it's not hard to figure out that connection since they now put the NBC logo on the Comcast yep. logo. Uh, exactly. By the way. Exactly. Um, and and they're like. How do you find legal TV? Here's our on-demand services for all of our partners that you are right. probably on if you receive this notice. Right. So go buy more right. of our stuff. Um, exactly. And so, I mean, well, one, I, I'm, I'm glad this isn't a law, okay? I can go find – well, I could maybe go find my uh, internet provider that's not part of this if I am concerned with this or uh, don't like that I'm receiving these notices for downloading my perfectly legal uh, – legal-esque – Grateful Dead purchases um, <laughs> and whatnot, uh, but uh, it would, one it looks like it's it looks like this is more shaped towards peer to peer, right? Yes, which yes, again that, that is, is a problem because people distribute that kind of stuff on peer to peer legally. People mm-hmm. have distributed podcasts, video shows, um, other content. Revision Three, who they, they got into a thing where they, uh, their peer to peer network got shut down. A primary source for their distribution legally mm-hmm. for content they make and own and distribute. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, I don't know that someone is going to. I told you guys about about Etree earlier. Um, you know, it's a bit torrent site. Yeah, um, is is someone going to make that? Distinction is someone going to to bother to look that each and every one of the bands that that uh, that has a torrent hosted there is 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 okay with being there? I I, I don't I don't know. Um, or are they just going to look at at the you know the massive amounts of data that are being transferred and think oh there's there's the bad guy? And they're really hiring like top level people to make these decisions. Decisions. No, this is going to be an intern. Uh, <laughs> you know, right, in right. the long run, we know how this stuff really goes, especially with questionably funded organizations. You know, <laughs> coming from something like this. Um, but you know, again, if it is an intern, good. <laughs> good. Cause, no, uh, no, because an intern is young. An yeah. intern would be able to differentiate the fact that BitTorrent. Isn't bad. We would help. I hope so. I we hope so. It, we would help. Well, I, I'm not going to make that blanket assessment that anybody's 21 years of old is okay with BitTorrent and has not drank the Kool Aid, especially if they're working for something like this. Okay. So you never know. Every 21 uh, year olds looking at my stuff is like, who in the hell is the Grateful Dead? What's <laughs> What is this? By, by the way, have you checked out the Grateful Deli over there on Penn Avenue? I haven't been yet. No. I drove by that the other day. I was like, oh, we need to stop there for lunch. <laughs> Just for the theme. Holy crap. <laughs> um, so so now uh, so we pour one out like, once again for the industry that we know and love. Um, 14 days to follow the appeal. There's a process. And now at least it's six strikes as opposed to three. Um, uh, you know, again, it's it's these services. Hopefully, you can find alternatives if you're having problems. I can't think. Well, I'm sure there's somebody out there. Like, I, I okay, I have Comcast and Verizon here. I have an issue with with both of them. Then what do I go to? Um, there's the, the, the industry here providers. is is the judge and the jury. Um, that's the thing. And that's it. I mean, there, there, yes, there's an appeals process, um, but the, but they're the ones making the decisions. I I would be really dubious about about getting any kind of fair shake uh, once you get into. Uh, uh, Two or three strikes. This is going to be one of those things where it's going to come through, and 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 somebody's going to 
fight if this is I don't know is there any is, is there any way to say this is non constitutional or something? It's not speech because it's somebody else's content. It's uh it, it it's it, you know other than just being a bad business practice for your customers. Um, I, I it, the only hope I think we're going to have is something bad happening with one of these uh, interns and they get shamed out of doing this. Um, that the, that's the only th- the only way out of this I can I can see of. Uh, I mean, because I, I mean, we're not, downloading we're, copyrighted we're not content about is legal. Yeah, so we point. don't really have we don't have a defense for it. Yeah. Um, but the, the, it, it, it's it is the bigger thing. It is the industry not grasping uh, how this works and and how it can benefit them. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> well, uh, one last thing. Hopefully, a lighter note. I don't know. Maybe this will piss some people off too. Sergey bring on the touchscreen says it's kind of emasculating guys as he wears his google glass on stage at ted with his <laughs> uncombed hair he's like i he sleeps in the google glass he rolled out of bed and rode, w- rolled down the road to what was this los angeles they had ted last week right and yeah. uh <laughs> so uh so chachi uh, you're looking at your phone this entire show do you feel emasculated no no <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. So, and again, this is like you know, kind of the the pre class buzz at this point. Um, I, is is he just? Because I feel like the two things that popped up from Ted as headlines there was this and the um, the um, uh, 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 the cars, the uh, the Tesla fellow uh, uh, with another uh, interesting quote about I think solar energy. Um, I, I I didn't think they were allowed to just sell their product to Ted. I thought it was supposed to be a little more high level to that, but that's what it sounds like coming out of it. Uh, uh, am I wrong? I'm sorry. What? I was. I was. My, I was, I was oh, are, 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 were you busy emasculating uh, yourself? Yeah. Oh. I was. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh. I was. So. I sorry, I was on Facebook. I'm sorry, I wasn't. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, <laughs> he's just trying to sell Google Glass that isn't available yet. Does exactly. people realize this? Exactly. That's all it's he's happening. doing. But it's just... <laughs> you're going to tell and millions of idea. iPhone users. And, and, the, and the great thing is this whole 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 uh, debate of products that don't exist yet between uh, the. Are, am I going to replace my phone? I'm looking down at uh, in my tr- in traffic. Uh, and, and checking my email with you know something on my face that's distracting me all the time, or looking down at a watch as right. we think Apple's going to put out very soon. Which right. it, and the idea is it really that conv- inconvenient for me to pull this out of my pocket when I get a message? Nope. At that point, so the only the only advantage that Google Glass might have is that I'm not going to walk into stuff. Hey, look, <laughs> maybe one, there that's you right. go. two, three moves, three moves. There you He's go, an expert. He's an expert. I at mean, this like point. messages. Is a professional, ladies and gentlemen. We can fill with the Google Glass. <laughs> we can finally fill that time where we where we walk from place to place and still receive information into our brains. I do that on my phone now. <laughs> you do that now. <laughs> I think that's the main cause of me getting injured. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's it. That's that's you go. It's that, it's that Windows Phone reading. commercial where uh, where everybody just kept walking into stuff, right. right? That I mean, that you should just replace that with a google glass at the end of the commercial right they I mean they just can buy that outright um but I, other than that the stuff i've seen from google glass i mean they want one I that'd do. be cool but, but still just that one. idea that idea did you see the uh the virtual shackles comic mm. i i posted where uh, they were playing yeah. the harlem shake and said uh okay glass go to meatspin.com and they took a video <laughs> put it together don't go to meatspin.com um and everybody just went to it. So I'm waiting for the. Ch- I'm waiting for that to happen. <laughs> Feminine touchscreens title. That's a show title right there. Um, <laughs> is your is your is your piece of glass getting you down, making you feel like less of a man, Chachi? No. I mean, is that maybe that's why we're getting bigger phones so we feel more manly? Yes. Is that's that it. it? That that's it. it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I went for thinner. You went for thinner. Yeah. Okay. I didn't go for bigger. I went for the It's about how you system. use it, right? Right. <laughs> it is. It's not about <laughs> the size. It's about how you use it. Exactly. I am perfectly <laughs> capable and confident in my size of this phone and use it to its fullest Ultimately, abilities and sometimes I'm... beyond. 
ultimately, what I want in a phone is what Tony Stark pulls out in front of Congress in Iron Man 2. <laughs> that thin-ass see-through thing where he takes over the computers. That's there what I go. want in a there phone. You go. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Speaking of which, yes. did you see the Iron Man 3 trailer today? There's a new one? It is. I did not see it that. It looks amazing. Guess what I'm watching in between these podcasts. It's not, it's not May 5th yet. It needs to be May 5th. It needs to be May 5th? It does. Well, it feels like May 3rd. So... <laughs> According to Charmin. Great. So, wow. All right. On that note, <laughs> guys, Uncle Crappy, Mike Pound, thank, thank you, you for joining us. In between be here you again. slanging the digital newspaper, your your new title, was what was it again? Digital editor. Uh, digital paper dude, I think. <laughs> Did, di- digital editor. Digital editor. I am editing digits. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's Who wants this dog? No, no. <laughs> Thank you. He's at Uncle Cracky. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why don't you tell me where you're from? Because I'm not getting that out there. UncleCrappy.com, uh, TimesOnline.com, uh, a couple other dot coms. I really, uh, I, it's, it's, can I get a feed, like just an RSS feed of your stuff? Because I realize how much you write about stuff I'm interested in. Um. Yes. Awesome. And... <laughs> Uh, actually, if you if you look at the um, uh, the, the the timesonline dot com site under opinions, uh, you will see a smiling, happy picture oh, of guy. me. Look at that guy! Uh, and oh, there is the uh, there is the archive for the geek column. Um, oh. I, I don't actually write as much as I used to, uh, but but that is that is uh, that is on up there. A new one every Sunday. What is this calling Dick Tracy? Yeah, it, me and everybody else who wrote about the Apple Watch. <laughs> well, you you know. You know, you gotta get on the train. You I, have, the, train, I right? have to say, it's kind of your job. Um, yeah. My my favorite news break to date yes. is still the uh, steel versus cheese one. Oh, I still bring Thank that you. up. Yes. I still bring that, that is, up from time that's to time. Still to show one people. of my favorite ones. Thank you very much. That was one of our better efforts. It was highly entertaining. <laughs> Thank you. I I, I, uh, I probably seconded by the foghorn one. Hmm. Uh, that, that was, was good. Was pretty good. That was good. Not quite as popular, but um, I, I think every bit is funny. <laughs> I think that should deserve honorable. Uh, <laughs> no, not Uncle Cracker chat room. That's a different guy, and is he? He's back in the trailer park now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he was playing a show really? at the at Latitude Forty One in North Fayette sometime this week. I don't know if anyone's going to notice or not, but is that and, that place behind the Walmart? Yeah, that's a venue. Yeah. Uh, it's, really? It has been repurposed as a as an entertainment. That was a. I bought my facility <laughs> before it was a venue. Yeah. So, right. I, right. I, I was getting I was getting glasses. I'm like, what is this Latitude 41? I meant to look it up. It's that's, it's not really very descript, and I didn't no. have new glasses yet, so I couldn't read the rest of the sign. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I haven't I haven't been. So I uh, but Uncle Cracky Cracky Cracker <laughs> is there. At some point, this I week. think you know maybe this will be your your alternate uh, uh, personality on. Oh, it'll be like your e just I'll add it to, add it to the list. <laughs> the things to do show that we are missing tonight. That I don't. That I don't. Well, because we do the shows on Tuesday. Yeah, I. I kind of block out things that are happening on Tuesday night. So you don't feel like bad because you're missing them, right? Right. Um, but today like D is playing yeah. at Stage AE tonight. Yes. Oh. Yes. And I'm missing it because it's a Tuesday, so nothing ever happens on Tuesday evening. Nope. Blanks it out. <laughs> right. Blanks it out. I didn't know they have MMA down at Stage AE. Mm-hmm. AE? Really? Yeah. Wow. I haven't been down there yet. Because uh, everything happens on a Tuesday. Yep. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Chachi, you're at? Everywhere. Hey, he's everywhere. I am everywhere you want to be. He's on the TV. He's at Unsung, which now has a Twitter. Well, we will have a Twitter very soon. We don't have a Twitter now. We we didn't. I, I I was told today we'll have a Twitter. Look for Unsung PGH apparently. Who's running the Twitter? Scott. Maybe we'll give you the keys. I, that's a bad <laughs> idea. You don't want me to have the keys. But that's coming out uh, next week. Yeah, we'll be talking about some stuff. What I watched you? the Easter egg, by the way. You watched the Easter it, egg that was extremely well episode. done. Go check out Unsung Forty Seven at the Sorgatron Media YouTube page. Yeah, you don't even have to watch the whole episode. Watch like the last 
<laughs> 30 seconds. 30 seconds. No, watch the it. whole episode because there's a really good episode. Well, right. I, I'm, I'm personally like, 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 love the episode right. because it's, we went to the Hollywood theater. There's a lot of, I just put the uncuts out, just that, you know, kind of the long form podcast style. There's great stuff where we visited the projector room and got to talk about that stuff and talk about what's happening. It really fits in this stuff. Actually, if you're wondering what's going on with digital rights management and how it's screwing over little guys like the Hollywood theater here in Dormont, go check out, um, uh, there is, there's a couple episodes where we talk about it. I forget, DLCP, I think, is the standard. And because of that, they can't show Rocky Horror Picture Show until they get this new projector, which they, uh, they, they're they trying to raise $75,000 between the projector installation and maintenance uh, costs uh, in order Holy to get crap. that going. Yeah, yeah. For for a you know, non-profit one-screen movie theater, they have Holy to do this. Uh, but they're doing some really interesting. There's a good discussions on there about uh, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, and the difference between two of them, and why they went with Indiegogo, and the you know, and the other stuff they're doing on top of that. I know just this past weekend they had a benefit where they had a, a Night of the Living Dead. They found one of the original uh, uh, 35 reels. I, I have it on my Instagram. We took a picture of because like it's Night of the Living Dead, like the oh, film, wait. the film. I have an idea. What? Chachi plays four. Yeah. Night at the movies. <laughs> It was already thinking of that dude. <laughs> or maybe an alternate. I'm like, can we hook video games up to this projector? I and don't even want to. Answer? Answer? Oh, the, the answer, dude? Yes, we can. I don't want to. No, honestly, I don't want to. No? You just no. Want to be there. We'll, we'll set up like we normally do. Off to the side. Off to the side and just play movies? All night. We could play for Super Mario 20, Brothers. Like for the 24, ones too, 24 you know? hours. There you go. There you go. I like this. Uh, invite That's people to stay over. That's an idea. That's yeah. an idea. Anyway, this is on for party. Uh, anyways, guys, this is the Awesome Cast. Thank you very much. Over at AwesomeCast.com. Join us in the chat room like these fine folks like the Riz, Brother Sorg, John Ayers, and Bobby F. Gita, and Texas Anarchy. Who wants this dog? I presume he's from Texas. I'm giving away a dog. No, you're not. And we're not giving away dogs here on the Awesome Cast. We are not in that business anymore you could have uh, a pledge drive you could have a pledge drive with the dog with the dog as a pledge gift <laughs> would, that, would that work and of course check out uncle crappy stuff i am trying to you. figure out how to raise 50 grand <laughs> what why <laughs> oh i don't want to go to work anymore oh that thing are you used to be are you back on that yeah. now if you're done ma- raising the money for kids you're back to the how do i raise money for myself angle yeah. okay good well I, apparently That's go fund the other eight months of the year right apparently go fund me yeah you could raise money for anything was it go fund me um What's her name? New Age Amazon? Yeah. Is currently trying to raise $450 to uh, buy herself a new laptop. Oh, no. Crowdfunding for everyone. This is a bad idea. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hit us with that awesome cast with your fantastic ideas for GoFundMe, and we'll see what we can do. Thanks a lot, awesome at awesome cast. Uh, I'm Sork. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. His job is to track those websites down and uh, sue the people who put them up to begin with to get them to take them down. So he calls today. He's like, hey, can you uh, check this website for me? He's like, they told me it was down, but I'm still seeing it, and I think it's because I have it cached. And he's like, just send me the uh, the fail request. I'm like, all right. So I send it to him. He calls right back. He's like, hey. He's like, how come you're allowed to have Firefox? <laughs> and I'm like, well, sir, um, my username says ADM hyphen. Yours does not. And he's like, <laughs> oh, I gotcha. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was immediately like I hit send. And 30 seconds later, my phone rang because he's one of the few uh, employees in the firm that have my direct phone number because I don't mind talking to him. That's. 
how you know. That's probably smart. Yeah, it's it, it's my system of who I don't mind helping. So if, if if someone if I if I have good rapport with someone and they call mm. and, and they email me and I'm like oh just call me this is my direct line, they often save that and I don't mind because I mean I don't mind talking to them to begin with. And this has been your weekly edition of I'm in IT. Fuck you, Chachi. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> See you next week. This. Would you call it sponsored that's, by Audible? Would that's you call a show it? That needs to happen. I'm in IT. Fuck you, Chachi. <laughs> Hey, that's your new podcast. We're dicks. first first guest, Sheep the Moon. I, I'm serious. <laughs> IT guys, seventy five percent chance we're assholes. Yeah, yeah, they're, and it's your yeah, fault. Great. You know, we, we should do that. That's a new podcast we do. We just get a bunch of IT guys on. Get it's your fault that with, we're assholes with beer. <laughs> and uh, who else is IT? Is it was a sick puppy IT? I think he was. Uh, he he has is. been. Was. I think I think Spoon was Chilla is jobs. Chilla is of course. Um, uh, uh, AJ uh, Dabatech. Oh man, we got a whole lineup. We can rotate like three <laughs> a week. Holy shit! This one, I, yeah, I would watch. I would watch that. <laughs> but but then again, but they, they, they okay. But but how many of them would have to protect our identity? All of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in so, some way, shape, or form, it would have to be. It would uh, have to be extremely so like we can, put, so we can put we can put we can do that we can do that <laughs> we all show up wearing luchador masks yes <laughs> yes I love it and now the everyone knows so and we'll, we can't and do we'll it. give you, give you guys uh, ridiculous <laughs> games like back when we did the luchador matches you know <laughs> who wants to be chupacabra <laughs> who was chupacabra uh, uh, I don't know. This dog is comfy. No, you could you could get you could get a panel of IT guys, and then you could have users call in with with their IT problems, and just let the IT guys rip. <laughs> oh man, really? What the fuck are you doing with that thing? <laughs> we just kind of the, I almost had one of those conversations with my dad this weekend. Because- Hello, I have uh, I have pop ups on my computer. Stop looking at porn, asshole! What makes everything open in media center on a computer? <laughs> my first guess is a virus yeah so um, I, I like started because i was like i'm here to help you with your your new iphone i'm not fixing this right now <laughs> all right we have to yeah yeah <laughs> i i spent the last nine minutes bitching rant, about work ranting about stuff work. i absolutely can't put on this show yeah I'm at sorry. least at least in front of it well i didn't use any names no no, no. i mean if you uh, want to edit maybe, it in maybe, maybe we'll put it at the end yeah maybe i'll put it in <laughs> I try not to try not to use oh, I'm sorry I keep talking <laughs>